So he's going to be, uh, he shall hold this office during the term for four years and together with the vice president chosen for the same term be elected as follows. Each state shall appoint in such a manner as the legislature thereof may direct a number of electors equal to the whole number of senators and representatives to which the state may be entitled in Congress, but no senator or representative or person holding office of a trust or profit under the United States shall be appointed an elector. All right, so let's stop right there. What is that? What are they talking about right there? First, they talk about the president. He shall uh, be of 35 years of age. He shall serve how long? Four years. Four years. The vice president shall serve how long? Same. How shall this elector, this, uh, this um, president be elected? By electors? How do we determine the electors? Well, that shall each, okay, so for each House of Representative member, there's one vote. Voter. Okay? Not, the House, does, they, they're not cast in the vote. The House members are not cast in the vote. They're these guys or people called electors. We get what's called the Electoral College from this. So, currently there are 435 members of Congress. Therefore, there are 435 electoral votes plus one per senator. That means two senators times 50 equals how many? 100. So that's 535, right? And then DC gets three. Okay? All right. Can you say that again? Yes. Sorry. Which part do you want me to say? Like again? the, like the electric college. Yeah. Or... Okay. So, so the way it's working is they set it up there. So, um, the state sets up electors. Okay. And the number of electors is equal to one per representative. Okay. Plus one per senator. There are two senators in each state, so we know there's going to be a hundred. Each state at least has two. Uh, each state will at least have three. There are two states with only three electoral votes, okay? Because they have one representative and two senators. So think about uh, how many representatives do we have in our state? We have 36, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, let's say New York has 27, California has 53, right? So you take that number of people in the House of Representatives, in the case of Texas, we have 36. Then we get two senators, right? That means we have 38, okay? That's a lot. You wanna win Texas, you wanna win California, okay? Democrats own California, and they own New York, okay? So New York has 27 plus two is 29. California has 53 plus two, which is 55 and Texas has 36 plus 2 which is 38. So Texas usually goes to the Republicans. Those other two go for the Democrats, okay? Um, so that's the way it works, okay? So now each state determines how those electors will vote. Now there's you have like winner take all. Like in Texas, if you win by one vote, if the Democrats or tech, uh, in Texas let's say Republicans win by one vote, well, you get all 38 votes, okay? In some, they say they could divide it all up, okay? Most states are winner take all. California, if you win by one vote, if the Democrats win by one vote, you get all those votes, all those electoral votes. There's been a debate whether or not the electors are obligated by law to cast their vote according to the party's wishes. So for example, you know, if the, if the Republicans win, their electors cast the vote, but you get one rogue elector in there going, well, I don't like this guy, I'm gonna be, you know, you know, so there's, there's debate over that. But that's how that's established. Now, does that make sense to you? Now, that's, that's in the Constitution. Now, so what this does, why, why did they do it this way? Again, these are all compromises. 
Keep in mind the compromises we discussed the last time we met. They have equal power in one regard and unequal power in another regard, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, they would at least get two uh, electoral votes from the Senate and at least one electoral vote from the House. Because there are two states, at least that I know of in the nation, that have only one, one House member, and that's Montana and I think it's Idaho. I think I wrote it down even. Um, so you can imagine, uh, no, Wyoming and Montana, they have one representative. Okay, that means their, their state is so sparsely populated that they only get one member. Texas is so huge and California is so huge. Think of California with 53. Now, if it's 711,000 times 53, that's, uh, or, that's a lot. That's a lot of people in that big state. Okay, so they need a lot of representatives. And if they got the exact same representation that, say, Wyoming did, that'd be kind of unfair. You'd be a very powerful person in Wyoming, okay? You don't want that. But you also don't want California telling the Wyomingians what to do, right? It's two different places, right? So they're equally represented in the Senate, and they are unequally represented in the House of Representatives. And when it comes to the Electoral College, again, they have some equal say and some unequal say. And so that's kind of how that works. So rather than winning the popular vote, the goal of the presidency is to win the electoral vote. That way you are running to win states, not individuals. Because if we got rid of the electoral college, which the Democratic Party wants to do right now, then states like California and New York would decide the presidency every four years. And you can imagine there would never be another Republican president. It's a political move. It's a way to win elections. So is that fair? Do Texans, do you, how long do you think the rest of the United States is gonna stick around if they can never win an election? I can see, you know, you see where these people will go, well, I'm just gonna take my ball and go home. So the reason we went into the union, they ratified it was because they, they put these safeguards in there so that the bigger states wouldn't be able to take advantage of the smaller ones. They're like, okay, fine, we'll do it if you do that. And then you can imagine now they say, well, we don't like the way this works because we're not being able to take advantage of the voting. So uh, we're gonna take away that safeguard from you. What do you think those states are gonna to wanna to do? They're gonna to wanna to leave the union that they were talked into coming into. Whether or not they successfully can or not is a different story. But given that New York and California, since Donald Trump's presidency, have both talked about leaving, Collexit, you've heard of that movement perhaps? Like the exit movement of California? Uh, you can see this kind of discussion ongoing. It's still the continued discussion of federalism versus anti-federalism, given too much power to certain groups. Okay, so with that being said, um, you've got the, the goal of presidential elections is to win states. So that's why you'll see Donald Trump and you'll see Joe Biden going to Florida. I think they have 27, which is, that's a significant number, okay? Florida is also otherwise known as Southern New York, okay? Because all the people go down there to retire. Well, Florida is a swing state. Florida is a state that can go either way. And if you get that state, that's a, that, that state by 500 votes in the year 2000 with George Bush and uh, Al Gore, Al Gore um, 
was it was decided by five votes, which ended up going to the Supreme Court, and they had to make a decision on who won that election based off of who won Florida. Now that only happens because of an electoral college, okay? Because whoever won Florida by 500 votes, didn't have to be, it could have been one vote, would have won the state, would have won all of their electoral votes, which would have put them over the, the needed number, which is 270 electoral votes to win the presidency. George Bush got it. What was the big deal there? There's several because of what was called hanging chads. And so they were ha trying to distinguish, determine which votes were for which president. And they were deciding, they were suggesting that certain people voted Democrat because of accidentally because of hanging chads. You know, they pushed, there's a little push pin, they pushed it in and it punched a hole in the um, spot where it said Bush or Gore and wasn't electronic like it is now. And uh, there's little things that hung on the bottom after you pushed it through and they were confusing apparently the readers of these and they had to go through and count every one and there'd be a Republican lawyer on one side, a Democrat lawyer on the other and the poll judge in the middle doing the counting, right? Do you have a poll judge, okay? Or precinct judge, the poll in the, you know, in the polling station and they're sitting there fighting over every, every stupid thing. Well, I tell you, it turns out it had to go to the court. Uh, the Supreme Court had to decide who they decided. Well, they decided George Bush won the state of Florida. Now that brings us to now. What happens if we find ourselves in that position again in this election, given that there's already been a, an army of lawyers, of over 500 lawyers, uh, hired by the Democratic Party in order to contest this election. They've already decided that the, the, they're going to contest this election if they lose. That means lawyers get involved. Lawyers are do their battle in front of what? Courts. What court will they end up going to if that if necessary? If necessary. Supreme Court. Well, what happens if you have eight justices instead of nine? Well, what if four of them decide one way and four of them decide another? You don't have a majority. You can't make that decision, right? Mm -hmm. So it's important that we have nine. Now, of course, why would the Democrats not want us to fill that spot besides abortion? They don't want a conservative. Or <laughs> yeah, well, you tell you, wait, Trump puts a, a conservative on there. He's basically putting his vote in there. But, I mean, would the Democrats do any differently? They absolutely would not do any differently. They would absolutely. In fact, what has been the response of the Democrats? They're like, well, when we go into power, we're going to stack the court, meaning they're going to put more judges on. You know, they're getting really mad, getting really feisty. And this is, you guys, this is, you really should pay attention. I tell you, there are people, you can get online and watch full on fights between hundreds of people over these issues Antifa, Black Lives Matter, Pr Proud Boys, and Prayer, uh, prayer, prayerful patriots. <laughs> People are getting shot and knocked out. It's crazy. Okay, this is this is very interesting times in America. All right. All right. So, uh, what do we have so far? Uh, we have the um, we were discussing the president and how the president is elected. Uh, we this is we're talking. We're coming up. Uh, in November, we're going to be electing the president, and whether or not we see uh, the results on the night, uh, that's to be determined, but you can see how that is established in the Constitution, right? Now, from there, that doesn't tell us what the powers of the presidency are. Now, I don't necessarily want to do that as of yet. I want to do it, but I mean... Uh, I want us to kind of look at this from a generalized view of what the Constitution does. The first three articles establish the three branches of government, okay? Then we'll discuss each one. We just discussed how uh, the president becomes president. The, uh, the 
representatives, how do they become a House member? Now that's direct vote. That's straight democracy, okay? Uh, how do judges become judges? Or how, I should say, how, how, does the, how do federal courts become, you know, in the judicial branch, how do they get their position? Well, they're nominated, right, by the president, and then uh, the Senate is one that confirms them. And so there's been a big debate over, you know, what types of judges should be on the federal bench. You have strict constitutionalists and you have living constitutionalists, right? We'll discuss that later. But that is why the Senate is so important because those are the guys, whoever has the majority in the Senate determines what legal theory gets placed on the bench when there's an opening. Now the federal bench is much larger than just the uh, Supreme Court, okay? We have different levels. We have appellate courts and we'll talk about that more, the different levels. But, so the president can place, uh, nominate people to the bench, okay? And then the Senate confirms them. And so you can get hundreds of judges confirmed. And uh, President Trump has been very successful. He's, he's confirmed probably the most, and I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to go out of limo, to, it has been the most judges, I think, in the history. So he's really remade uh, the judicial branch of our government. And the, the number of uh, Supreme Court nominees that he's been able to confirm, especially now with Ruth Bader Ginsburg, is just astounding. Uh, I think three, three. So uh, this will be his third. So that's why they're trying to stop him, by the way. And there's uh, Nancy Pelosi's like, who's Nancy Pelosi? She's the Speaker of the House, right? Mm -hmm. She's like, we're gonna, we're gonna impeach him. Well, what can you impeach a president for? High crimes and misdemeanors. Is it a crime or misdemeanor, which is also a crime, a high crime or a misdemeanor, to confirm a federal judge to the bench? No, it is not. There's nothing about, nowhere in the Constitution says he can't. In fact, in the Constitution it says he should, because that's one of the presidential powers, but we're not there yet. Let's get to Article 3 and just read the beginning of that, because we're not done reading Article 2. I just want to read the beginning of Article 3 because of the judicial branch, okay? So the judicial power, the judicial power of the United States shall be vested in one Supreme Court and in such inferior courts as the Congress may from time to time ordain and establish. So who, who creates the courts? The lower courts? Congress, okay? The judges, both the Supreme and inferior court shall hold their offices during good behavior and shall at stated times receive for their services a compensation which shall not be diminished during the continuance, their continuance in office. How long is a federal court appointment? It's for life. House of Representatives, two years. Senate, six years. President, four years. Federal bench, life. That's why it's important, because you're not getting rid of them once they're on the bench. The only way to get rid of them is through impeachment. And the reason you can get rid of them is for bad behavior. And it's very vague. What does that mean? Certainly crimes would be one of them but they would have to really mistreat the Constitution to be uh, appropriately dismissed, okay? So, um, okay. This is, okay, let's go back to the assignment from last week. This was why I, I gave you that assignment. You watched it? And you watched it. What'd you think? Kind of, I feel like it was kind of like a movie I saw you do, in a way. Horrible, isn't it? 
Did you get the same feeling? I mean, okay, so let me help you here. So this is about how the court, uh, the Supreme Court nominations became highly politicized, okay? And there was a guy named Robert Bork uh, who was going to be confirmed and Joe Biden, okay, head of the Ju Judiciary Committee of Congress, uh, Senate uh, Judiciary Committee, held a hearing, right, a confirmation hearing for Bork where they questioned him. And they decided in, that they were going to get rid of this guy. They had to get rid of him. He's a strict constitutionalist. They were worried about the tipping of the courts uh, towards a guy who uh, believed that Roe versus Wade was uh, wrongly chosen. And they wanted to make sure that uh, no such guy ever saw the court. And so they basically assaulted him with everything under the sun. I mean, they just brought, you, you know, the questioning was rude. It was, it was personal attacks. And so anyway, the, withdraw, the nomination was withdrawn and somebody else was nominated and um, confirmed. Well, what ended up, Mitch McConnell uh, was a junior senator at the time. He's, he's now the Senate Majority Leader. He saw it to it, according to the video, as I'm going to make this right. Okay. Now, the, a new term came out of that called being borked. If you are borked, it is during the confirmation hearing is when they just treat you so horribly, right, with the attempt to uh, get rid of you. Well, it happened again when uh, Clarence Thomas, another conservative, was nominated to the bench. The Democrats did it again. They, they said, well, we're going to bork this guy. Well, what they did was they went one step further and they found a woman named Anita Hill to make an accusation against him. Now, what was his statement? What, now, unlike Bork, who withdrew himself, what did, what did um, Clarence Thomas do? He kind of turned it around on him and he said, he, he said he referred to it as a high-tech lynching that was going on that when a black man disagrees with your views he called it an uppity black man disagrees with your views you will orchestrate a high-tech lynching okay and he ended up getting confirmed even in the midst of being accused of rape okay now of course it's interesting that this comes out only as a result of him being confirmed to the Supreme Court. Never came out before, right? So here comes a third try. Uh, what ends up happening is in the last 10 months of President Obama's uh, election, okay, uh, his eight years, his last year, eight years. So he's going out the door, but uh, all of a sudden, uh, the conservative icon, Samuel, not Samuel Alito, um, oh gosh, <laughs> Samuel Alito. Um, er, look it up, uh, who died? He's everybody's favorite on the right and uh, I, I'm, I'm ashamed that I can't remember it. Um, and I will and I'll be like, Ugh. but he dies. It's not Samuel Alito, he's still on the bench. Um, and He's a strict constructionalist, good friend of Bader, Gin with Bader Ginsburg, even though they're on opposite sides of the legal theory spectrum. And, and now President Obama has an opportunity to nominate somebody to the bench. The problem he has is that the conservatives, the Republicans control the Senate. And so Mitch McConnell remembers Bork Right, and he says, "Well, guess what?" Um, he also remembers Clarence Thomas. He's not going to confirm. Was it Antonin? Yeah, Antonin Scalia. Thank you, Antonin Scalia. Sorry, I feel embarrassed about that. Anyway, um, 
he's not going to let Anson and Scalia's seat go to a liberal. See, the president's liberal, but the Senate is controlled by the conservatives. The president can nominate, but they confirm. They cannot nominate, they can only confirm. And so Mitch McConnell says, well, you know, it's an election year. You know, we're just going to wait till the end of the election and we'll see who's president. And they're all mad. Okay. Merrick Garland was the guy he had um, nominated, who's semi moderate. He, you know, Obama had to pick somebody that maybe the Republican held Senate would, uh, you know, allow in. But Mitch McConnell's like, we're not even going to have a vote over it. And he used that power as a check on presidential, you know, authority. And uh, he, he ran a risk because if he lost the election that was coming up, what election was coming up? Donald Trump versus who? Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. Everybody thought Hillary Clinton was going to win. I mean, I don't even think Donald Trump thought he was going to win. I mean, he probably voted for himself. I was so shocked. Television shows, okay, like Homeland, they had already shot videos or shows with uh, the President of the United States becoming a woman, you know, kind of representing her. Um, Time Magazine, I think it was, already had their cover with Pre Hillary Clinton on there, and the title was Madam President, I think it was. They, they had to go back and redo all these things, fix them somehow. And because they everybody assumed so strongly she was going to win. So there was a big risk Mitch McConnell took in withholding because, in a way, Merrick Garland was kind of a middle ground guy. If Hillary Clinton won, well, we got four years now. It's the, he's not going out the door now. It's we're giving you the most liberal person we're, you're going to get, you know. And so they took a risk. Well, so did Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She's really old, and Obama was saying, "You got to retire. You got to retire." And she's like, "I'm not going to retire." And she risked it. She wanted to stick around for Hillary Clinton's, you know, presidency, so that she could swear her in. That's my theory. And it backfired because she lost. They lost the election. Trump won. That meant McConnell got to nominate the next, next one. And that was Neil Gorsuch, who ended up being actually fairly easy. Okay? Until we had the next one come in. And the next nominee was Kavanaugh. Now, Ruth Bader Ginsburg's like, I got to hold on till President Trump gets ousted by the next election, right? Well, you know she just died. She didn't make it. That opened up another one. But Kavanaugh, what happens to Kavanaugh is they're going to bork him again, right? Because they don't have the power in the Senate. They need to do something. And man, did they go. Did you guys watch it? You watched it. You watched the video, right? But did you watch the actual confirmation hearings? You had Alyssa Milano sitting there with her sign, you know, hashtag Me Too, or listen to the women or victims and all that. And they bring this woman in who speaks like a little girl. I was just a little girl going to a party. And, and I mean, she had that kind of victim sound, right? And then she's a professor like I am. And you listen to her lectures on video, and you're like, whoa, you sound a lot more with it in your videos than you do on this. Right? So she's putting on an act. Anyways, she accused him of rape. Again, they did an Anita Hill thing. And what did he do? He fought back. They confirmed him. Okay? Uh, the, what, did the, what did the Republicans do this time, though? They didn't question her because they weren't going to be seen as the ones bullying the victim. So they brought in a rape victim specialist who does you know, intake, and she asked all the questions. At the end, she said, I don't believe her. She's like, I don't, I don't believe she was raped. That she's like, she, she presented, she didn't present enough evidence, you know, for her case. Anyway, uh, so now, here we are, Ruth Bader Ginsburg doesn't, doesn't, um, she doesn't last. Even if Trump loses, she didn't last. Trump's got 
a little over a month and now the Democrats are using the same argument that Mitch McConnell used. You cannot replace a, uh, you cannot fill this vacancy with so little time left. You have to wait until the next president, right? They have to, so they're hoping he'll, they'll go, okay, we'll wait till after the election, right? And they hope that Joe Biden wins and then he gets to nominate, you know, Ruth Bader Ginsburg's, um, you know, replacement. So what's the argument? Well, the argument goes something like this. The presidency does not end in the third year. You don't give up powers in the third year of your president until your presidency is over, right? And you do the things the president does until the presidency is over. And so they're going to do it. They're like, man, we're going to do it. We got the power and we're going to do it. And so they're going to do it. And so what has been the response? response has been, well, when we get in power, we're going to add more judges, we're going to get rid of the Electoral College. A, a real interesting tantrums being thrown out. I want you to see that. Oh, I've seen on social, well, I've just seen it from social media, but... Um, Threats for civil war? Well, no, they said that, um, what I'm excited is that it was, uh, it was uh, uh, her dying wish yeah. for them to wait till Is after. her dying wish in the Constitution? No. no. Nowhere in the Constitution does it say you will follow the dying wish of, you know, the one departing office. That's not how it works, right? For what was her, if her dying wish was to uh, establish, you know, communism in our country, should we follow that? No, of course not. They say that. In fact, you know what's funny? That's actually debated whether or not that's her actual final wish. Is it her final wish? What would your final wish be? I mean, don't get me wrong. I really believe that she was um, she was holding out. She did not. I think this this is a paper I should write editorial. I think she was. She did not let anybody know of her condition. I mean, they 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 they. They. She said she had bile stones. I think they were hiding her condition. And that's, that's not what should happen. They should have known. And if we knew this six months ago, we knew she was battling cancer, but they said it was kind of in remission and all this stuff. And of course, nobody's saying retire, 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 because if the Republicans said it, they'd just look bad. If the Democrats, the Democrats aren't gonna say it because that would mean you know, you know, the Republicans would be in power to fill the seat. But reality is, you know, is that our seat or is that her seat? Ours, the public seat. You know, um, and so she put us in that position by not retiring when Obama asked her to, by taking that risk, and then even when she was really sick in the end, you know, this whole what they are calling the constitutional crisis of time. Well, she did that by not letting us know sooner, because we could have fought this out sooner. How much time we got? Ten minutes. Very good. Okay, I think I, but it's all pretty interesting uh, political theater right now. If you, you know, that's why I want you to watch the news as we read the documents, as we see the fight between the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists, it still wages on because clearly I don't want New York telling me what to do. Okay, I don't want, I lived in California. I don't want to live like them. I moved to the great state of Texas, okay? So these are all battles that are still being waged, okay? Very exciting stuff, okay? And we can see the, uh, okay, so uh, here's something, uh, what's your assignment? What, for best due tonight? Well, it's not due tonight, but that I just assigned you at the beginning of class. Um, I want you to know. Oh, watch the, watch the news. Or? Yeah, start. Come up with bullet points of uh, the top five national headlines, including the election, okay? And then I wanna know where you got your information from. That way I can scrutinize what you say, okay? Say, oh, really? But that's just what they say. Because keep in mind, the news is giving you their side. And they, they're telling you they're not coming from a side. That's, that's not true. I used to work for the news, I know. I think 
think they're all biased in some way. Everybody's biased. Everybody's biased. And I know people say, you can't be biased. Yes, you can. Everybody's biased. You know, like professors, oh, you ought not be biased. No. Uh, to say we ought not be biased is it's just saying like a square ought not be shaped. We're all biased. We all come from, we all perceive things as a certain way. And I'm going to give my perception of it, and I'm going to tell you, you don't have to agree with it, and you're not going to be punished by it. Some professors will go, I'm coming at this, you know, I, I'm so unbiased. And then they say, if you disagree with me, you know, I'll punish you. One of my, somebody just asked me yesterday if I've ever failed a student because they didn't like him. I said, no, why would I do that? Because that, that, that'd be horrible. But I know professors, not here, uh, that do do that. They're not here. But yeah, the, it's an ethics issue. But um, because you know, they don't like your politics or something. I had a friend, he took a women's studies course, <laughs> and he was a guy. And he said, the woman said, look, if you disagree with me as a man, you're done in this class. You're just done, you know. And so he just got up, walked out. So that's bias and kind of arrogant. Anyway, with that, we could uh, call this a day. And uh, for you, just um, read. I'll put it on there. I guess I'll have to put it online. I forgot that. I should probably should put it on there. Don't worry about it. Do, do what I told you to do. We're when gonna will stick. the bullet points be due? What's that? When will the bullet points be due? Yeah, I'm going to put those up. Uh, as soon as I put them up, I'll give you a few days because. Okay. So, so far, I think we've got the uh, Declaration of Independence, right? And I told you to read Articles 1 through 3 of the Constitution, correct? But I didn't put that up, right? I did not. And I just want the who, what, where, when, why is that. Uh, then I gave you the video, okay, which I'm going to look at. You all turned that in, I'm sure, right? And then... Uh, then this assignment, so we've got four assignments so far, and then I, I just wrote a quiz for you, and that should be up very quickly. What is the deadline for the quiz? Or? I'll put that up with the quiz. Okay. I'll tell you what day it is, and then I'll, you know. It's gonna be like 20 questions. You won't, I don't think you'll need your notes. I think you'll just be good. You'll probably just be able to take the quiz and go, ah, I already know this. Because 